NATO has restricted access to its Brussels headquarters for Belarusian diplomats amid outrage over Minsk's interception of a European airliner. Belarus is not a NATO member, but has had a diplomatic mission to the alliance since 1998. The move is largely symbolic, but reflects anger felt in Western capitals at Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko after his diversion of a Ryanair passenger jet allegedly made to arrest an exiled dissident. But Lukashenko and his ally, Russia, are not the only topics on today's agenda. There is no doubt that um, Afghanistan faces serious challenges and uh, there is no easy uh, way forward. At the same time, uh, I strongly believe that uh, uh, at some stage the Afghan had to take full responsibility for their own future. The only way uh, to a, a lasting peace in Afghanistan is a fully Afghan-owned and Afghan-led peace process. As the US and NATO begin their withdrawal of troops from the country, many experts have expressed concern that the Taliban will quickly overcome the forces of the Afghan government. Violence has steadily mounted in recent months as the drawdown gathers pace. But besides Afghanistan, the meeting is set to discuss a whole range of issues, China being one of them. China is not sharing our values. They don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in the freedom of speech, of, uh, of speech and the uh, freedom of, um, of, uh, of media. And we see how they uh, oppress uh, minorities. Today's meeting is a preparation for June's summit, when US President Joe Biden will join Stoltenberg and meet with the other leaders of the 30-nation military alliance to usher in a new era in transatlantic ties after four tumultuous years of the former Trump administration.